would be great to have a former CIA director with us, wouldn't it? Well, we do. We have Ambassador James Woolsey here. Um, Ambassador, you've heard this back and forth about privacy rights versus the, the rights of authorities to know what's going on with those who might want to kill us. Where are you in this debate? Well, this is a perennial problem. You've got to balance uh, security with uh, independence and, uh, and privacy. And, uh, but one place where I think we've gotten out of balance is the changes uh, that were made a year or so ago after Snowden's uh, revelations. Uh, people who went along with Snowden may want to re, uh, he rethink He did a lot that. of damage, didn't he? I think he did. And you now have a situation in which the uh, commercial companies, uh, data companies that are sophisticated, like uh, Sapient, let's say, know, can know a lot more a lot more effectively uh, than the government under some circumstances. For example, and that's his uh, doing. Uh, well, it's affected. The things are slowed down by what uh, by he going exposed. along with what right. uh, Snowden uh, proposed. But you, you can have a company that uh, pulls together what, uh, let's say, uh, um, uh, Google uh, knows what uh, sites you've visited, and uh, and Amazon knows what you've been buying online, and Sapient pulls this all together, and before you know it. You're walking down the aisle in a, 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 a pharmacy, and as you come to the hair care products, uh, an ad comes on your cell phone uh, for hair care products. Now, I don't get too many hair care. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, funny. But, I have but a lot of, you, a lot you of might literature have for dwarf wrestling, so that, that now I've got to watch <laughs> what I'm doing. But I'm asking, you know, the one thing I always wonder about with this is uh, I think it's all the lawyers. I don't know if you're a lawyer, you might be. I was but, three years. Uh, okay, that's okay. Uh, but I, I think the companies are so afraid of being sued, mm -hmm. and we live in such a litigious society that even though they are shutting down, let's say, in, in this case, uh, Sayed Farouk's site, it is a legal risk to, to, to take that to what would, to me, be an obvious next level alert authorities. I don't know why. But it is. It, it is, but there's another way in which we make it safer for ourselves to help the National Security Agency and other FBI and others in learning things because we are so watched in the intelligence business and so scrutinized. Uh, we are the most watched intelligence uh, institution in the world. Uh, and by that I mean we have uh, judicial uh, oversight uh, from special courts. We have congressional committees that do nothing except oversee the intelligence business and so on and so on. When, when you talk to Europeans or anybody who complains to us about whatever NSA may be doing or CIA and ask them what their oversight is like, they don't have any. For all practical purposes, we're, we're the world's champions at watching ourselves. Well, I've seen that in all the James Bond movies because <laughs> the, those agencies are doing their own thing regardless of the politicians who come right. and go. But do you get a sense that something like this brings the pendulum back to the safety concerns because free speech advocates say that's just what they fear that that security types will will hang on this leverage it to the max use it as an excuse to spy on everybody well this is going to be a tension always between privacy and security uh, for us uh, because we have a constitution that is built on conflict, uh, checks and balances. So you're going to have some people on one side, some on the so other. We've had Paris, we've had California, and the percentages who feel that free speech should be above all and above all is now the mere opposite of the support it was a year ago. Right. Well, we go through these cycles. Right. Uh, and uh, we've got to stop veering so far off in the cycle. And I think correcting what was done in the aftermath uh, of uh, the Snowden business a year or so ago would be one very good step for Congress to take. Could I pick your brain while you're here, Ambassador, on your thoughts that so far all intelligence seems to point to Sayed Farouk and Tashfin Malik acting alone, not in concert with anybody, no money wired into their account, it was a loan deposited into their account. But we know that each and both at different times we're talking to lots of people, communicating online with lots of people, where do you draw the line at communication and participation? I think what we have to understand is that the radicalization here is going to occur in all sorts of different ways. Husband this happened wife, three years ago. Uh, it's going to happen in the past. It's going to happen in the future. It's going to be done in mosques. It's going to be done in, uh, among couples, all sorts of ways. And part, the problem is that we are dealing with a very powerful religious ideology. Uh, the, the Islamists, uh, and uh, particularly uh, ISIS, 
are trying to recapitulate what happened 13 centuries ago in the spread of the caliphate uh, across North Africa, reached essentially from modern-day Pakistan to modern-day France. And it was a huge and rapid expansion, and they have intrigued the Islamists, have intrigued the youth and others with the idea that their life can have meaning if they will recapitulate what happened 13 centuries ago. And so they want that big battle, right? They, they want. Well, that, isn't that President Obama's argument against getting involved because that's what they would want? Well, or to the degree that we, I think would, we don't would make it work troops. by not being involved. We've got to work with the real moderate Muslims, and there are quite a few. I know some of them, and they're wonderful people. We've got to work with them against but the like Islamists. But like an Iraq type invasion or something like that, would, to President Obama's point of view, be, be, be feeding the very. Beasts we're trying to kill. Exactly. Well, okay. Ambassador James Lewis, very good seeing you. Good to be with you again. You know, he came in almost in disguise today. I didn't recognize. <laughs> very low key. Very low it was key. Just an Australian hat. I liked it. I liked it very much. <laughs> Ambassador, I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Thanks for Thank your you service to this country.